Now we were just speaking about what reasons people give for thinking that God exists, for being religious. Now we're going to look at some on the other side of the equation, the other the atheist's position. And almost universally, you hear people who defend atheism talk about the amount of evil in the world, and it's something that has become known as the problem of evil or the argument from evil. And the idea is that people think that because there is so much evil in the world, or there's such such a, uh, a vast amount of unjustifiable evil, babies dying, uh, natural disasters, we can think of, uh, you know, uh, Sandy, the, our superstorm that really displaced many people uh, at Kingsborough, um, members of the faculty, students as well. Excuse me. <coughs> Cole's going to kill me. Or maybe kill your ears. <coughs> Sorry about that. But there's an argument. People cite reasons that there's too much evil for there to be God, there to be a benevolent God. Now, the guy, there's some of you guys sitting down, and you, you're thinking about it a second. If you want to think about it a little bit more, stop the recording. And I, I encourage you to stop the recording and think about what's said and go back and think, uh, you know, think about these things a little bit more carefully. But some people think, you know, that's not a good answer. That's really is not a good reason for thinking that God exists. And they respond with something that's become known as the free will defense. And in fact, in our particular course, we're going to see da- we're going to look at a version of the problem of evil uh, from David Hume's uh, dialogues concerning natural religion, and we're going to take a look at something called the free will despo- resp- uh, defense, excuse me, which kind of has originated from another philosopher we're going to be studying, Leibniz, and the idea being that well, the evil that exists is due to free will and so God is really not or cannot be held responsible or is not responsible for it and that's the atheist side of the equation that we're going to look at because that really is the most common one and it's not going to be an exhaustive study but I'm trying to give you guys an idea what philosophy is and give you a flavor of you know kind of problems we talk about now so we've seen you know the belief side theism the non-believer side, the atheist, and then there's sort of the middle position, agnosticism. And what agnosticists say is there's just not enough evidence. Sometimes people become agnostic by looking at the arguments on one side thinking they're no good, looking at the arguments on the other side and thinking they're no good, and lo and behold, they say, gee, there's just not enough evidence to go one way or the other not sure where to go on that and then with regard to that position some people talk about not you know question of actually belief or non-belief they kind of respond that there are pragmatic justifications and when I was talking about theism I mentioned um, Pascal's wager that to some extent is a what I'm calling a pragmatic justification by a pragmatic is hey look I can't prove that God exists I can't prove that he doesn't you can't you can't prove that he doesn't exist but look we have to rely on faith and this is a commonly held position but notice I wanted to give you a flavor with regard to philosophy and religion I think these certainly are the kind of first of all it's philosophical problem sometimes clergymen priests rabbis imams talk about these kind of problems under sort of the heading of theology. It's, you know, kind of the study of God, but when they're doing that, they're really talking about a philosophical question, namely, the problem of the existence of God. So now we've seen that the, the an additional kind of philosophical problem, the philosoph- problems in the philosophy of religion that we'll be looking at during this Uh, this semester, and now I just want to turn to a discussion of problems having to do with value. Remember we said there was knowledge, reality, 
and value. The interesting thing about philosophy of religion is it really spans all three of those areas. But I just want to talk to question, uh, uh, turn to questions of value for a second. 